I've been meaning to film a review for this for a few days. I actually finished watching it, I think, sometime earlier this week, like really early this week, perhaps Sunday or Monday. And I don't remember how I even came to find find out about this movie, maybe through Letterboxd. That could be. But it ended up that this particular movie, The Witch in the Window, was on Shutter, so I had easy access to it. And it took me about uh, maybe two days to watch it. It's actually not really a very long film. It's only about an hour and it's less than an hour and 20 minutes. So it's a really quick watch, but it doesn't feel fast paced, even though it's not very long. And I think a lot of that is because this film, Basically. oh God, you scared the <laughs> shit. I'm trying, to film. Take was basic money to <laughs> trying to film a review. Brought to you by <laughs> Stanley from He Said. Made he my said. heart jump doing a review for a horror movie. Uh, oh, what, what <laughs> I am. What, what was I even saying? Oh, I think I was saying. Oh, okay. Uh, make sure you keep the part where I scared you. So I, I, <laughs> I remember what I was saying before I got interrupted rudely by my son. What I was saying is that even though this is a short film, it didn't feel rushed. And part of that was because this movie isn't really super heavy on action or thrills or even a ton of scares. I mean, there's this underlying sense of unease throughout the whole thing just because, well, number one, you know it's a horror movie. And then when the film starts off, it's a scene that's taking place, I think, like in the kid's mother's... Um, apartment where they live in I don't remember if it's New York or I don't remember but this scene right here this is like the opening scene and there's this underlying hum or music that's playing and it just it's kind of building this sense of ooh, just like uneasiness I mean and that's you're supposed to feel that way so you know well because you know it's a horror movie you know bad stuff is going to probably be happening but the opening scene just kind of sort of reinforces that sense of just even if nothing bad is happening you're feeling uneasy because you don't know when stuff is going to happen that's going to scare you so this is a short little ghost horror type movie and the premise is that there's this father and son and the father has bought a house it's a it's a fixer upper and he initially talks to his son about how he's going to flip it. But the reality is that he wants, really wants to keep the house. He and his wife are, are estranged or... I'm sorry, hold on a second. I'll take my inhaler. Okay. I think I was saying that he and his wife are estranged. Uh, you get the sense that they're... Well, initially I thought they were divorced, but I think what the what was really going on was that they were either separated or he like the husband would come and go into the picture or whatever so they have a fraught relationship there's also stuff that the son has been sort of exposed to that is not very good for a young child you know like violent stuff he's seen on the web and it's kind of affected him the mother's really tightly wound up about it and she, she's also tightly wound up about just everything. I mean, there's, there's like references made to the world is going to end, I, I guess, because, you know, she's one of those environmental types or whatever. And so you can imagine the type of mental strain that puts on the kid because he's also processing these sorts of, you know, hyperbolic types of uh, things that are fed into him by, you know, an authority figure. So the kid has some issues. Okay, I was I was just looking at my notes. This takes place in Vermont. So the house is in rural Vermont and wherever the 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 mother and the child live is in the city, but I can't remember what city. Just a big city. It, it's it's a, you know, crowded place, city location. Um, urban urban type of location. The father and the son have like a fraught relationship as well, but on the flip side, something that I really enjoyed about this movie, and I'll tell you, this was the glue that kept things together for me. This is what kept me watching, was the chemistry between these two actors, or you could also say the chemistry between father and son, the way they communicated with each other, 
the father was honest about his faults. He was trying to be honest with his kid, but at the same time uh, would would sometimes uh, wor- frame things in such a way as to try to sort of protect the child from things that he felt like were an unnecessary burden to place on the kid. You'll know what I mean as you're watching their interactions. And yet he's trying to be as honest with the kid as he, I guess maybe, maybe the right wording is not necessarily talk down to the kid, but try to frame things, situations in a way that's understandable to a young mind. Because I think this boy is like, I think he's like supposed to be, I don't even know if he's a teenager. I can't remember. If he's like maybe 12-ish or I, I don't recall, but he he's young and he's right at that time, you know, where things are difficult and it's already bad enough for him that his father's not always around and the mother is so tightly wound and stuff like that. So anyway, they come to this house and they start fixing up the house and then they find out that the house has a history. And so... As they're fixing up the house, things start to happen. One of the things I wanted to mention was this little optical illusion thing. You know, those, those, I think they were pretty popular in the 90s. Early 90s was when I first noticed them and you could stare at them. And not everybody could see through it and see what the image was. In this case, the first time you see it, it's actually not an image. It's a word. I'm not going to tell you what it is in case you can see it. I want you to try to like pause the screen and look at it and see if you can see what the word is. And then the second time when it's shown, it has changed. And that, you know, things that kind of like signifies things are being put into motion that kind of sets off this chain of events that happens in the house with the father and son. And so... I I thought that was kind of cool uh, that the optical illusion art that was put in there as part of it. And they never told you what it was. You just had to be able to look into it and see what it is. Because even the father, he couldn't, he couldn't read what it was. And he asked the kid and the first time you see it, the the kid was like, I'm not going to tell you or something like that. What was I, what was I saying? I I was talking about the optical illusion, how I thought that was kind of cool, how they integrated that in. Something else is that there are jump scares in this film, not, uh, you know, as is typical, but also something else I appreciated about it was that when things happened, so you know how in horror movies, people do dumb stuff, right? They go back into the scary situation. And I appreciated that the characters in here acted reasonably. There was a point in time where I felt like the father was being, he was, he was being foolish and he was making your typical, you know, stupid type of decision that a lot of uh, characters make in horror movies. But then as things progressed, you, you get a better understanding as to why he's doing what he's doing. And I hear noises in the kitchen. You, you get a better understanding as to why he's doing what he's doing. And it makes sense. And then when things happen at the end, you under you you get it. Like I got it. The ending, it's 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 kind of unusual with this this film. It ha- I guess the best way to describe the ending would be bittersweet, because there was good and bad to it, and I don't really know how I feel about like basically I'm not sure if I like it did okay I'm trying to figure out the right words to explain how I'm I wasn't unhappy with the way it ended it felt like a fitting ending given the characters involved so I'm not, that's maybe that's clear as mud, but I really, I don't want to give this away. I feel like it's worth you just watching it and experiencing it for yourself. You may not be as impacted by it as I was, but I think really, like I said, the thing that just drew me in was the relationship between the father and the son. I really liked how this father was not 
represented as a loser type dad, a dumb man, you know, that type of thing. He was trying to do the best he could, loved his son, trying to build this bond with his son. And I really love the little kid's acting. I thought he was so, so good in this. And after I watched this movie, I went looking for some stuff about it online and I saw this little panel that the, the, the director and the main actor and the kid who played his son, they were doing like a Q&A and stuff. And it was really interesting to listen to uh, them, in, them interacting up on stage and talking about it. And of course, the kid was a few years older because, yeah, he looked like by the time I was, the panel came along, he was maybe in his mid-teens. So anyway, I'm a terrible judge of age. But anyway, it was, um, I thought it was a, a pretty effective little ghost story. And I liked how it was put together. I liked the pacing. I really loved the interaction between the characters, especially the father and the son. I thought it was cute how the kid, he's trying to be this tough and smart kid. Like he's kind of smart ass sometimes, but at the same time, he's also, he's also easy to communicate with. He's not a complete little brat in other words. But they have this funny little bickering type of communication sometimes. And I liked how this kid, he's like in that balance between he's on the cusp of becoming a young man. And yet he's still a young, a little ch a, a child because he still sleeps with a teddy bear, you know, little cute things like that. I just, I just, I thought this was just really well done. And I meant to, like I said, do a review for this and have it up this week but it's not going to go up until next week because i've got other reviews that i that i've done you know and, and i want to get up be before then uh before this is those are a little bit more time sensitive but anyway i just wanted to share this film with you if you haven't watched it maybe check it out it's a, it's a it's a quiet little horror movie it's not high on any sort of like special effects types of stuff it's just it's just bare bones, simple, not low budget, not necessarily, well, I mean, it, it probably was low budget, but what I mean is it doesn't feel like a cheap, low budget film. It's, it's well made and I, I really appreciated it. And I'm glad that I took the time to check it out and wanted to share it with you guys. And maybe you'll like it as much as I did. Maybe you won't, but if you happen to watch it, let me know what you think. Anyway, I guess that's it for this one. I don't have I have anything else going on in my head about it, so I'm going to wrap this up. Later, guys. Mm -hmm.